Hello! In the previous video, we looked at how to generate a DC voltage and the sign signal with the DA converter of the STM32F446 microcontroller. Although the sine wave did appear in the output, the program had a problem. Hi! That's right. The problem was that in that program, the microcontroller was not used for anything else and in practice, this solution cannot be used in a task where it is important that the frequency of the analog signal is fixed even if new functions are added to the program. What happens to the sine wave if we use our microcontroller for something else? In this case, the 1 millisecond delay would no longer be appropriate because the delay would have to be set depending on the runtime of the task. This is not really feasible in practice, so the sign signal will be distorted. The following solution gives an example of what can be done when it is important that the frequency of the output signal is accurate. For example, if you are listening to music while browsing the internet, you might not want the music to slow down while loading a page, depending on the CPU load. The peripherals of the microcontroller can be configured to perform this task without intervention and without using the CPU. If, with such an implementation, we later extend our program with even more computationally intensive tasks, it will have no effect on the frequency of our sign signal. For this, we invoke the DMA mentioned recently. How does it work exactly? DMA works by giving a peripheral, in this case the DAC, the address of the memory area where the sign points are located. A timer is then used to set exactly how often the output is updated. The elements of the calculated array of points are passed to the DAC peripheral using DMA timed with timer2. It is also possible to disable the output buffer and enable the built-in signal generators. The DMA is set to circular mode, so when it reaches the end of the data array, it will start again from the beginning. If you want periodic signals to be continuously output without change, you should use this solution, but if you want to play music, for example, you should select normal mode and when the DMA expires and causes an interrupt, set the memory to the next section of audio. To solve this problem, reopen the .ioc file and find the DAC settings. First, set the trigger condition to timer to trigger out event. This means that the new value will be output when timer2 expires. Then, enable DMA by pressing the Add button on the DMA settings tab and set the mode to circular and change the data width to word to match the data width of the array used to store the sine wave. To get a 10 Hz sine signal, the timer must be set to generate a TRGO that is a trigger output event, a thousand times per second, which causes the DAC to set the next element in the array to the digital input. To do this, the interrupt frequency of timer 2 must be set to a thousand hertz, as discussed in the previous video. This can be done by setting the clock source to internal clock, which means that the timer will run from the internal 16 MHz clock. We then use the prescaler to divide the clock signal to 1 MHz. For this, we need a division by 16. Since the division is done by counting from 0, we need to set the prescaler to 15. Then, set the counter mode to up, the other option is down, but this time we choose up and set the counter period to a number 1 less than you want. In this case 999, so that 1000 TRGO events are generated every second. The internal clock division option allows you to further divide the clock signal. In this case, it is not used here. The auto reload of the preload register should be disabled at this time. It should be enabled if you change the counter period frequently from within the program, and it is important to have accurate transitions for short periods. The trigger output, TRGO master slave mode, is needed when combining multiple counters. It should be disabled in the current task. Trigger event selection 
should be set to update event. Setting all the parameters looks like this, so we're ready. Then save the .ioc file, generate it if it doesn't happen automatically, and modify your program as follows. We're in the same user code begin section, but now we'll use the hal start dma function. Its first argument will be the hdac structure, the second, the DAC1 channel 1 macro, the third, our sign data array, the fourth, the number 100, and the fifth, the same DAC align macro. After that, we start timer 2 with the hal tim base start function. And then what I should do is delete that part in the infinite loop because that's already done by the DMA, right? Yes, please delete it. Once the deletion is complete, compile the program. If it compiles successfully, proceed to run it. Next, let's measure our sine wave using the oscilloscope. If everything is correct, we should see a 10 Hz sine wave. The waveform looks great, the appearance of the 10 Hz sine wave indicates that our application is functioning properly and the DMA is effectively managing the data movement. It's good because the frequency of the signal will not be affected if you write your own program in the main cycle later. This is because DMA relieves our processor from frequent data movement so that it can perform more important operations that require more computing power. That brings us to the end of the chapter on digital to analog conversion. We really enjoyed this part, and we hope you did as well. Hopefully, we had a lot of new and interesting things to show you. Do these projects yourself at home, and if you happen to get stuck, feel free to check out the written curriculum. And don't forget to watch the rest of the Crystal Clear Electronics videos. Join us next time. See you soon. Bye.